Okay, so I told you that we had one more piece to look at in terms of enthalpy. And specifically what we're going to talk about briefly in this screencast is bond enthalpy. And bond enthalpy is what you might expect that it is. Bond enthalpy is the average energy that's required to break one mole of a particular type of bond. And you'll notice that the designation that's here is a little bit different, but we see some things that look pretty normal to us. The designation that you're going to look for is there's a subscript of D here, and that's for dissociation, which just means breaking. And remember that when you see this symbol at the top, that means that we're at standard thermodynamic conditions, which means 25 degrees Celsius in one atmosphere. So whenever you see that symbol, that lets you know you're at a standard state situation. So, for example, let's, let's think about what this means and, and try and make sense out of it. When we talk about an energy needed to break a bond, let's look at an example. Here's a molecule of methane drawn right here uh, as a reactant. And let's think about what makes sense. Well, if we break a bond, let's say we just break this bond right here, that requires some energy. It takes energy to break a bond. And in this case, breaking one bond from methane requires an input of 427 kilojoules per mole. Now here's something that's interesting. If we take that same, if we take the products, meaning we take this stuff here, and specifically we take what's left of methane after we've broken one of the hydrogens off, and we break another bond, we notice that the enthalpy value that we get for that situation, even though it's the same type of bond, it's still a carbon-hydrogen bond, the enthalpy value is not the same value. Notice here, the enthalpy for breaking that particular carbon-hydrogen bond in that situation is 371. Now, that's important to note because if we go back to the definition, the definition is noted as it's an average. So that's important for you to pay attention to and recognize that this is an average value. So what that means is really instead of the situation that we first looked at or even a secondary situation, the bond enthalpies that we're going to be dealing with are more of an overall average. So taking something like methane and breaking all of the carbon-hydrogen bonds, so severing not just one, but severing all of them, and then taking the average of the total energy to give us what we would call a bond dissociation energy. And this would be an average value for a carbon-hydrogen bond. 412 kilojoules to break one mole of carbon-hydrogen bonds. So as we look about how we're going to use this to solve actual problems and how we're going to use bond enthalpy data to calculate enthalpies for reactions or formations or combustions, whatever you're interested in, we need to remember two things, and they're shown here in blue. We need to remember that we're going to have to carefully think and determine the number and type of bonds that are broken and we're going to have to determine the number and type of bonds formed. So remember, it's always going to take energy. It's always going to take in energy when you're breaking bonds. And we're always going to release energy when bonds are formed. So breaking of bonds, that's what we would call an endothermic process. And when bonds are formed, that's the exothermic process. Now both of those things happen in a chemical reaction. So we can take all this information and put it together into an equation that looks pretty similar to other equations that we've seen this week. And that's where if we want to figure out the enthalpy for a particular reaction, in this case, if we want to fill, figure out uh, what I'm calling delta HR, we just need to know the sum of all of the bonds that are broken, and then we subtract that from the sum of all of the moles of bonds that form. So at this point, let's take a look at an example and break it down and work through it together. So here we have an example where we have propane. And propane reacts with oxygen in combustion process to produce carbon dioxide and water. In fact, this was one of the sample problems from the AP notes that I posted last night. And I want to know, well, what, what exactly is this delta H value? That's what we want to calculate. What you're going to have to do, which is a little bit different from other problems this week, is you're going to have to look at the structure of the compounds. So you're really going to have to be able to say, okay, 
this is what the structure of propane would look like. This is the structure of oxygen. This is the structure of carbon dioxide. And then this is the structure of water. And you also have to take into account how many. So coefficients matter. So you're going to have to pay attention to the 5, the 3, and the 4. So if we look at this, and we try and count up how many of each type of bond that we're breaking. Let's start with the carbon-hydrogen bonds. We would have to break 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So we're breaking 8 carbon-hydrogen bonds, or 8 moles equivalent. And we have to break 1, 2 carbon-carbon bonds. So 2 carbon-carbon bonds. And then we'd have to break five oxygen-oxygen double bonds. So that's five O double bond O. And then we would have to break one, two times three, so that's six. Or we'd have to form, sorry, form six C double bond O bonds. And we would have to form eight hydrogen-oxygen bonds. So let's just categorize these real quickly so we don't get confused. These are the bonds that we're breaking. And these are the bonds that are being formed throughout the reaction. Okay, so take a minute and, and think through this. Okay, maybe it's a good time to pause the video, go back if you need to look at the other information uh, before we move forward. Okay, if you're comfortable with everything, now we're ready to actually solve the problem. You notice over here on the left, I've got a table that has bond types and their corresponding dissociation enthalpies. Notice all the units are in kilojoules per mole. And we're going to use the equation that I presented earlier, the sum of the bonds that we broke minus the sum of the bonds that, that we form. And that will look like this when you fill in all of your information. Okay, so now I've got the complete solution written out in blue. And let's just make sure that everything makes sense to us based on what we've seen from the previous problem. So the information that's shown, and I'll just underline it in... Uh, Try and pick a color here that make it visible. So you see this first component here. We've got 8 times 413. That's because we had 8 uh, moles worth of carbon-hydrogen bonds. Each carbon-hydrogen bond has a value of 413 kilojoules. We have 2 times 347. That's the 2 moles of carbon-carbon single bonds. And then we have the 5 moles of oxygen-oxygen double bonds, so 5 times 248. Those are all of the bonds that we broke. And then you see the subtraction symbol, and the next piece is um, the bonds that were formed. So we had 6 moles of bonds forming between carbon and oxygen, and it's not just a carbon-oxygen single bond, it's a double bond, so we have to make sure that we pay attention to those values. And then finally we have the 8 moles of hydrogen-oxygen bonds. Add all those together, and what you get is a final value of negative 2,054 kilojoules per mole. So that's an example of how we can use bond enthalpies. And what I'd like you to try now is go back to the AP Notes 09.pdf file. This is on Schoology. And I want you to try task 9D. Try all four problems. And understand I'm going to be checking this before class starts and before we go over them. So I want to see your attempts. So make sure that you've attempted AP Notes 09 PDF, task 9, 1 through 4. Have a great night and good luck studying for the quiz tomorrow.